Uh, working with complex flows, we are nearing the end of the presentation, but um, um, keep in mind that we want to also do a, a session of uh, questions and answers, but I want to show you everything that I can within the hour and a half that I have. So let's load the uh, complex flow. Uh, this complex flow actually is a ray tracer written in magma. So I have a scene in which there is a plane turned to particles in front of the camera, and I'm shooting a ray through each particle uh, that is on that plane. And if I select a geometry object somewhere in the scene and I move it around, it's actually ray tracing it with two bounces of reflections and ray trace shadow maps. Not, not shadow maps, but actually ray trace shadows. I have also animated that ball, so if I move the time slider, you can see it moving around, and uh, the reflections are going to reflect that change. If I take this teapot and move it around, you might see the reflections of the other objects uh, affect, uh, being affected. Um, so this is a relatively complex flow and contains a bunch of black cops and lots of wires. You saw it before I loaded it once as an example. And reading this flow can be relatively difficult. What are the inputs? What are these inputs doing? What is happening in it? And what does what? And so on. So we're going to take a look at how to organize a complex flow and how to navigate through it. We can collapse, we can expose controls, and we can uh, use black ops. First collapsing sub-branches, if I uh, double-click a node that is connected to other nodes, like this one here, uh, any nodes that are connected to uh, its subtree are going to be hidden. The flow still works, it's still doing the range the intersections in the background, but uh, the flow is actually le less crowded. This is a little bit too much hidden, uh, but uh, I can go to any portion of any operator, and if I double click that operator, it hides any operators that are connected directly to it. If an operator uh, is connected to um, some other nodes that are not collapsed, it's still going to stay visible. Uh, if I go and collapse all the output nodes, I collapse the first one, but the second one forces everything to stay visible. If I collapse this one, I'm just double-clicking both nodes, and now I have suddenly absolutely nothing visible there, and it's still working. Now, if I want to concentrate uh, on the inputs only, the option inputs on left that I showed in the beginning, the shift control l doesn't, it's not affected by the collapsed state of the flow. So all the inputs that existed at this level are actually displayed here. I can even go to the options and say in the um, view where it said, where was it? Um, input on the left options. I can say that I'm only interested in input values, so I can disable this one. Then I can go here and say I'm going to uh, invert the state and the only inputs that are actually shown on the left now are values. So the one is the reflection amount, and if I go here and change it, the reflections disappear from my rendering because I'm multiplying. This is the multiplier for how strong the reflections are, and the other input controls what is the color of the shadows. So I can go here to something that is bluish and it will tint my shadows in blue. Um, and this way, I actually found out what inputs are available at this level, and I was able to access them without actually navigating through a really crazy flow, which, if you look at it normally, you wouldn't know what is where. Um, the other thing that I can do in this case that's really useful is I can go to this guy and say, uh, I can expose you and expose you. This one is exposed already, but this wasn't, so I can go and easily find the expose option. And now I can close my editor and actually work with the shadow color without even having the magma flow editor open. I can make the shadows red if I want. Uh, and everything is cool. So um, good way to navigate and to quickly expose inputs is to use the uh, collapse option of the tree and the uh, shift control L to put the inputs on the left. And uh, we saw about the exposing controls. Uh, I'll skip over that because we have some other videos online that actually show how to expose uh, more advanced controls like MUX and uh, Switch. And uh, Black Ops, the using of Black Ops is really uh, a good idea. I'm going to load the flow that contains, um, this is a teapot to convert it to PAT volume, and on top of the stack we have a ray intersection. And this is something that we just did before, but in this case I'm using a, 
a little bit noisy plane. If I want this rate intersection to be stored as something that I want to use in the future, for example, I can select all the nodes that are used in the rate intersection here. I can right click and say black op from selection. Now I have one operator that does the whole rate intersection thing and I can go and give it a name and call it, for example, ray int. I'll save it to disk and now if I look in blobs, I have a ray int operator that if I drag is going to contain exactly the same uh, flow that I just saved to disk. Um, so you can encapsulate any operations that you use very often, save them to disk as uh, black op and whenever you need them, just drag them, connect them and so on. You can also expose outputs, you can explode this flow, if I go here and say explode black op, I'm getting all the nodes that we had before. Um, now they are at the bottom because they're not really connected to anything and sorted uh, at the bottom. But I could, for example, select all these nodes and um, let the, the uh, let's say, uh, the input geometry node to be outside in order to be able to uh, pick a node. But the other thing that I could do is I can just go inside, say edit blob, select this one and say expose it and even though it's in a sub uh, level of the flow, it actually has been exposed and has the title blob, this is the name of the operator, so I can go here and say this is ray int and now under the ray int title I have this exposed geometry and I can go and create a, for example a geosphere somewhere here, bring it down a little bit so it intersects slightly with the uh, uh, um, um, plane and then in the modify panel I have my picker, I can go here and say get by name, pick that geosphere and so now my ray intersection also uses the geosphere in addition to the plane. Uh, and you don't really need the flow to be open for anyone that uh, knows how to use Max to actually make that change, pick the sphere or remove the sphere from the ray intersection. You can go here and just click on the sphere and it goes. So uh, exposing controls makes it uh, unnecessary for a user that uh, is not interested in the flow itself to even open the Magma Editor, just expose what he needs to know and he can use it as a regular modifier without having to look at all the craziness inside. Last thing that I want to talk about before my time runs out is the Magma Debugger. Um, you can take an existing flow and peek into what is happening in the nodes. You can go into the debug mode and that gives you a list with values. Right now I'm showing only the first 10 particles. I can show 110 particles if I want, but it's relatively fast in the latest version of Cryptor. Uh, and it shows you a column for each operator and it shows you a row for each particle and you can go here every 10, increase, uh, see the next 10, the next 10 uh, or just go back to, to the beginning. You get the minimum, maximum and the uh, mean values of each column uh, in the latest version, this is in Genome and the latest version of Cryptor. And uh, a couple of other useful things that you can do here. Um, you can display the content of uh, selected nodes. I can go here and say show me only selected. Right now nothing is selected so I'm getting only the numbers in front. If I select the multiply I'll get a column that shows me only the values in multiply. And you also notice, especially if I make those nodes a little bit larger, that the actual values passing through the nodes are listed on the nodes so you can see what is the input channel here and how it gets multiplied by a value and then goes out to color. I can change this value and if I change the value, uh, it's currently showing me what the value is and if I go back and select this one, I'm going to get the new multiplied value and I'll disable the show selected only. I can also turn off the min, max and mean if you don't want to see them. And one last thing, um, if I'm uh, showing the content of, um, for example, this uh, ray intersection here, I'll say selected only. I'll select this one and you see that all the outputs that exist in the intersect ray are being listed in a single column, which is really difficult to read. So there is an option that says show the node outputs in separate columns. So now I get the single selected node intersect ray creating a bunch of columns uh, with all the possible information about the position of the intersection. Uh, this one here is the whether it's valid or not, all the intersections were valid. This is the object index, the first object was hit and uh, we have the 
face index, we have the distance to the uh, intersection and so on. If you resize this column, it's going to remember the name of this column and its size, and next time you have the same type of node with the same uh, title, it's going to use that size. 